this is a shocking thing to say. This is absolutely shocking. Sadly, not so shocking these days in our present climate. I feel like every single time I log on to Twitter to X, someone whose movie I used to like or whose art I used to like, whose songs I used to like is saying something stupid. It's always stupid when an artist says something like, well, don't listen to my music if you support Trump. And I'll get to that in a moment. But but the way that Rufus Wainwright worded this is especially egregious. He goes so far as to say that he was horrified, horrified. All the things going on in our world, in our country, and Rufus is so privileged that he's horrified to learn that Trump and his supporters enjoyed his song. Horrified. And then he goes so far as to call it blasphemy to enjoy a Leonard Cohen song, which, which Rufus Wainwright did a cover of, and that's the song they played at this Trump event. He calls it blasphemy to enjoy a Leonard Cohen song. Now, listen, Leonard Cohen, great artist. Blasphemy, not really sure you know what that word means, Rufus. I take special offense to this because I used to be an artist. I guess I still am in many ways. I guess it's always inside you. I spent many years dedicated to the craft. I still love it. Obviously, I was not as successful as Rufus Wainwright, but every good artist knows, even just the consumers of art know, that good art is a unifier. Good art is enjoyed by the many, by the masses, because good art, great art, is timeless. And the reason that it's timeless is that it speaks to the universal human experience. That is the reason why we still watch Shakespeare plays. It's the reason why certain pieces of literature or songs or bands or movies go down in history and are enjoyed by generations upon generations upon generations because they speak to the universal human experience, which is something that, yes, even Trump supporters experience. And so as an artist, as a serious artist, you should want for your movie, your book, your song, to be enjoyed by as many people as possible, because that is the entire reason d'etre for art. That is how art unifies. That is how art brings the masses together. It's why storytelling is such a powerful tool, because it has the power to shape the consciousness of the masses. And that's why it's a tool that can be used for such evil or such good, because we are moved by stories. We experience something in a great movie with a great song. We feel something and we're all kind of like feeling a very similar thing. You have the power to touch millions, billions of people and you should lean into that as an artist for good. When someone says something like, you shouldn't listen to my music unless you are a Trump, not a Trump supporter. You shouldn't listen to my music if you're a Trump supporter. Not only are they preaching something that is absolutely antithetical to the core of what art is, to the essence of what art is, to the mission of what art does, but they're also speaking something that is antithetical to their own mission. In this insane diatribe, literally within this diatribe, Rufus Wainwright preaches about love and peace, and tolerance, and acceptance. But he's too stupid to realize that what he's saying, which is, you shouldn't enjoy my song if you're a Trump supporter, is completely antithetical to love, to peace, to acceptance, to tolerance. That's not tolerance. That's not unconditional love. That's not acceptance. That's just be like me, or you're bad. Think like me, or you're bad. Submit. Comply. I want to control you. That's not peace or love or acceptance or unity or tolerance. It just blows my mind that these artists will sit here and not only crap all over art, but they're crap all over what their stated mission is. They claim to be the side of tolerance and of acceptance. The hypocrisy is wild. The fact that they can't see what they're doing to art, what they're doing to this country is wild. Donald Trump and his supporters enjoyed some music. Donald Trump stood on stage and swayed to some classic songs and people have lost their minds over it. I swear we're at a place where Donald Trump could save a puppy and people would find a reason to get bent out of shape over it. Trump supporters are human. Donald Trump is human. Kamala Harris supporters are human. This should be very basic stuff. And honestly, y'all need to sit down and talk to some Trump supporters, not even so that you can change your mind. It's really not about that, but 
if you are 10 years into this, because we're 10 years into this, we're 10 years into Donald Trump announcing he was running the first time. If you are 10 years into this and you are still saying that the reason that your fellow countrymen support Donald Trump is that they're all actually white supremacists and racists, you are lost. You are ignorant. You are the problem in this country. You are saying false, baseless, dangerous things. And you need to stop. You need to sit down with some Trump supporters and figure out why they support him. You don't have to change your mind, but you need to know why. You need to know what you're actually up against. You don't actually believe that fully one half of the American electorate are white supremacists. Why don't you try to figure out what it is that made Trump win in 2016 when everybody said that he couldn't? Why don't you try to figure out what it is that he spoke to in people that made them elect him? Why don't you try to figure out why now it's close, it's neck and neck? Why don't you try to figure that out? Because if he were really as awful as everyone says he is, and listen, I believed it. I believed it for three years. Y'all had me for, I guess, like four or five years, really, up until 2020. Why don't you try to figure out if he were really as bad as they say he is, wouldn't he be losing support? Wouldn't it not still be neck and neck, neck and neck in 2020? Why don't you try to figure out what you're actually up against? It'll, It'll behoove you, too. It'll help you be more effective. It'll help you win. Because you cannot be effective against an opponent if you don't even understand who your opponent is. Y'all are sitting here thinking that you're fighting some kind of white supremacy, racist battle, and you're not. You don't even understand what it is about Donald Trump, what it is about his messaging, what it is about his policies that speaks to something inside of half of the American electorate. Why don't you try to understand that so you can be more effective? Because there are two ways to win in politics, and in everything else. You either coax people over to your side, you change their minds, you have effective messaging, you speak to whatever it is inside them that is missing something, that is yearning for something, that is wanting something, or you go to meaner measures. You have bloodiness, you have conflict, which is something that we all should really be wanting to avoid right now. But if you've given up on changing people's minds, If you just think that half of the American electorate, all of your opponents are white supremacists and that's it, then you are hastening us towards the second thing, the conflict, which again is something that we should all be wanting to avoid right about now. Understand what you are doing when you talk like this. Understand what you are pushing us towards. Understand what you're saying, because it's very serious. If you believe that the actual reason Donald Trump appeals to anyone is that he's a racist and they're all just closeted, now not so closeted, I guess, racist, you're lost. You're lost and you are pushing us towards conflict because you have given up on half of the American people. You've given up on changing their minds. You've given up on winning them over to your side. You don't even understand what the conflict is here. You don't even understand who your opponent is. You don't understand anything. You're just spreading divisiveness and you're dehumanizing people. If you truly believe that Trump supporters cannot or should not even listen to your song, then you don't believe that they're human. And I take this really seriously because I was caught in a lie for five years. And now I've come out on the other side. I enjoyed Rufus Wainwright's cover of Hallelujah when I was a liberal. And that didn't stop when I stopped being a Democrat, right? And I'm still human. I had an authentic experience that caused me to walk away and eventually become a Trump supporter. And you don't understand it at all if you're sitting there telling me it's because you think that I'm a racist and I'm not even a human and I shouldn't be able to enjoy your song. Shame on you. You are the problem. You're not for unity. You're not for tolerance. You're not for peace. You're not for acceptance. Shame on you.